first things first. Check, make sure our chamber's empty. In there. All right. Separate the upper and the lower. Two take down pins. Let's remove our bolt carrier group and charging handle. start with cleaning up our, our bolt carrier group. We've got about a hundred rounds through this, about 75 of them suppressed. Lubed it with fire clean. This stuff it makes cleanup easy. Just wipe it off. There you go. Pretty dirty. Got a little bit of carbon on the bolt tail. We're gonna let some fire clean soak on there for a minute while we hit the rest of the rifle. There we go. Alright. Get our charging handle. Shooting privy partisan M193 PPU stuff. It's, it's pretty good ammo, but it seems a little bit dirtier than the PMCX stack I was using. Especially suppressed. I don't know if you can see in there, it's probably not bright enough, but it's got pretty much all the carbon out of there. Even on the base of that chamber where it normally collects. Just going to pop our buffer out. This 
really isn't necessary, but I just kind of want to go over a complete cleaning of the M4 for the sake of those who may not have done so before. All you do to get that buffer and spring out, there's a little plunger in front of the face of the buffer. You depress it and it'll come on out. It's pretty simple. I'm using a spring coat spring, the painted part goes towards the buffer. And you just feed it back in. And kind of wipe, up, wipe the lower down a little bit. You always want to make sure that you don't uh, don't drop the hammer on that part of your AR there. It could potentially crack something. I've seen it done quite often. It normally doesn't crack anything, but you never know, especially when you have a registered lower, you don't want to risk that. All right. There's our suppressor. Surefire 556212. All right. See our uppers kind of Kind of gritty there. Just wipe it out with a paper towel. Should be all it takes. That's why I really like fire clean. It it's kind of like a frying pan seasoning, cast iron skillet seasoning as far as how it makes things so easy to wipe out once you treated the metal with it by treat the metal with it, all I mean is apply it by itself, typically on a new firearm or one lube with something otherwise, I'll degrease it with alcohol and then I'll just apply fire clean like any other lubricant, there's no, there's no hair dryer, there's no oven, there's no crock pots, there's no magic involved there, just remove the old and put the fire queen in in its place. There's our upper. You can see it wiped out pretty nicely, I hope. The video captures that. Alright. Let's clean out our chamber. We've got a nylon chamber brush. It does plenty well. You don't really need a stainless or USGI brush. Nylon works fine with the added benefit that it's just a little gentler there. On the Tear a little patch of our paper towel off here. We're going to wrap it around this to mop out that chamber. snake here. Feed it down the barrel. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. 
that light I'm running is the Roshworks SL1. It's a light as well as an integrated front sight. The light head was designed by Gene Malkoff. He's pretty famous for the LED stuff he's been putting out for some time now. And the body of the SL1 there was made by the company that used to be Next Generation Arms. They reformed as Roche Works. There we go, that gets that bore about as clean as it needs to be. It's a hammer forged bore. It's Daniel Defense Upper. Those bores are pretty smooth. I found they don't copper foul like a lot of button rifle bores don't do so in my experience. Whether they're chrome lined or stainless. Molly. All right, let's revisit our, our bolt tail here. See how that's looking. Take the old thumbnail to it real fast. Yeah, I remember back when I first started shooting AR-15s, I would use rim oil or the brake-free CLP. It was brake-free back then instead of Safari Land. Yeah, this would take a brush or a screwdriver or some other instrument like that. Now it just takes a little bit of soaking, some fire clean, and a, and a thumbnail. Gets it, gets it pretty good. Yeah. Really liking the fire clean stuff. It just, it doesn't smell bad either. I'm doing this in my, in my kitchen. I don't eat on this table. Like the rest of America, I eat in front of the computer, the television. This, this table is just for, just for stacking bills on and making YouTube videos with. So, even if I was, even if I did eat on it, this stuff is non-toxic. It's not, not something that'll harm you. Drop a little bit in there. It's fire clean it. I'm only using a few drops. It goes a long way. I could have probably run the bolt a little bit wetter since I was running it suppressed today, but it did all right. <coughs> put our bolt back in there. You shouldn't be able to put a bolt in wrong for all you that are new to this. The bolt. Extractor goes on the right hand side for a right hand bolt. Only stag makes left hand. Pull it forward after inserting that cam key. Turn it. Take your fire pin, firing pin. Let's drop her in there. Make sure that's all the way forward. Put our little cotter pin in there. Make sure our firing pin doesn't drop out. Bolt carrier groups plenty clean right there. Charging handle, a little bit of lube on it, a little bit of fire clean there. I like to get a little bit on my finger here and rub it into the upper. This weapon wouldn't pass a white glove inspection, I'll tell you that right now, but white glove cleaning on an AR is a waste of time and I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen the filthy 14 where Pat Rogers took a BCM carbine and ran thousands and thousands of rounds through it, didn't clean it, just added lube. You know, some people argue that cleaning the M4 platform at all is a waste of time, just add more lube to it. I, I tend to like my machines clean, but 
not going to argue that it's necessary to even do as much as I've done, but this is plenty, plenty. We'll put our charging handle in first. It, groove there it slides up into otherwise you'll have a heck of a time with it. Drop our full carrier group in. Go ahead and put our rubber back on. There we go. Alright. function test here. Safety. Can't pull the trigger. Safety off. Hammer falls. You may also be noticing this aim point T1. It's got a different mount on there. That's a that's a Bobro mount. Andrew Bobro invented this. It's the QD mount. Every review I've seen of them has been very positive, and I myself have had extremely good luck with them. They uh, hold zero and return to zero flawlessly in my experience, at least as far as I can tell. And the sling I'm running, in case you're curious, that's a VTAC padded sling. I love it. It adjusts easily. It's a good, solid two-point. has nothing that... Uh, Nothing you don't need, everything you do. Anyway, there it is, start to finish. Field stripping, cleaning, reassembling, function testing your M4. This should answer any questions you may have about cleaning it. We accomplished it with one paper towel, a boar snake, and a chamber brush. And uh, really didn't take us all that long. And me talking, you know, added some time to it, trying to hold it for the camera and all that, add a little bit of time to it. But as you can see, this is not an intimidating platform. It's not difficult to clean. It doesn't require that it be spotless. And um, I found that this stuff, whether you run it on an M4 or an AK or a Glock or whatever you run it on, I found FireClean does an excellent job. It's one of the few products out there that, um, that will actually perform as advertised. And uh, anyway, I, uh, I'm tired. I've been up uh, about 20 hours now. And I don't recall if I showed you the bolt tail after I got done scraping. And I probably did. Don't know if I did or not. But let me show that to you. And for some of you people who aren't familiar with this, I'll disassemble the bolt carrier group here so you can plainly see it. This cotter spring, it's going to come out like that. You collapse the bolt. You turn your. It's hard to do backwards. You turn your cam pin here after you. Sorry about that. Remove the firing pin. 20 hours awake. All right. Collapse the bolt. Let's remove our cam pin. It should fall out after turning correctly. All right. Let me wipe it off. Wipe off that bolt tail. Yeah, that's just some fire clean and a thumbnail and one paper towel. No, no chiseling, no magic, nothing special. All right, you put her together the same way you took her apart, same order. Bolt goes in, it's collapsed. You turn that extractor far to the right, the right-hand carrier. You'll see a hole in the bolt there. We're going to drop in our cam pin, pull the bolt forward, spin the cam pin, there you go, like a T. Drop our firing pin in, make sure it's all the way forward. And this deal here, our little cotter pin, we're going to insert it so that it's up and down. hope you can see that. just keeps it from getting bent a little bit. Sometimes they get bent. I found that putting them in this way prevents that. All right.
function check. There we go. Alright, we're done with that. I'll keep my day job.